This is a response to uh, a Thunderfoot video called something like Is God or Was God a Volcano? Is God a Volcano? And in that video, uh, Thunderfoot, you Thunderfoot, um, take passages from the Bible, predominantly from Exodus, a little bit from Deuteronomy, to demonstrate that the, uh, the phenomenon which was described in those passages better fits the description of a volcano erupting than it does a divine being of some kind uh, making some kind of holy proclamation and, uh, and setting the scene for the Ten Commandments. Well, yes, it does, but I can't really understand the, the purpose of this project. I can't understand the purpose of the video, if I'm honest. I mean, um, yeah, I, as an atheist, I'm an atheist myself, and I know you're an atheist, Thunderfoot. I, my understanding is that the, the Bible is a collection of books best understood as a work of fiction of some kind, a work of fiction. Uh, it might be all, all kinds of fiction, it's uh, and, and different kinds of fictional elements. Some of it might be might considered kind of inspirational tales or pieces of poetry, and I'm thinking of the uh, Songs of Solomon particularly there, or uh, cautionary tales. A lot of it is clearly just crap, um, and, and some of it is quite, is, is, is like something out of a horror film. Um, but what it isn't, as I understand it, at any way, any, at any, any part of it, is an accurate description of something that actually happened. I don't, I don't know why it would serve us to, to argue that case. Um, I mean, of course, we can cherry pick parts of the Bible, and you've been very good at cherry picking parts of the Bible for ludicrousness. We can cherry pick parts of the Bible and attribute natural phenomenon to those, um, to those. But in a sense, aren't we, when we do that, aren't we just doing the Eric Daniken thing? You know, Derek Daniken, the guy who uh, described uh, engravings in Mayan temples or Inca temples as, as evidence of um, ancient astronauts. You know, I mean, that's, isn't it the same thing? You know, you're looking, you're looking for a phenomenon in, a, in a, essentially a work of, hist of fiction or some kind of historical text which has been to endless translations uh, and attributing... Um, a totally spurious reading to it, really. I just don't think that approach does atheism a lot of justice, really. I don't think it does its credit. Um, because, it's, as I say, it's essentially the same strategy that um, frauds like Eric Daniken use, but it's also the kind of strategy that uh, religious apologists use at, at times. Uh, I've been looking at a couple of videos on YouTube recently about... Um, Quran scholars claiming to have found evidence for knowledge of the Big Bang in the Quran. Now, obviously, that's uh, laughable, you know, laughable, really. But isn't that essentially what you're doing? You're looking, to, you're looking to a holy book and finding some kind of natural phenomenon. And yes, yours sounds slightly more plausible. Yeah, you're a better scholar, presumably, than the um, than the. the uh, Quran apologists, but it's the same project, and it's a non-scientific project, you know. And, and, and your thing is science, Thunderfoot. And you're very good at that. You're a great science advocate, and um, and science, as you know yourself, isn't about perverse interpretations of what is essentially poetic texts, particularly very old poetic texts that have been through endless editing and translations and mistranslations. Um, yeah, I don't think I just I don't think it's it, I don't know who it, who who it's intended to be aimed at. I can't imagine a religious person being impressed by that interpretation, suddenly giving up their god because it's not, because you make him sound like a volcano. But I don't also think it does atheism a great deal of good either, because it demonstrates the worst kind of cherry picking and partial interpretations of texts that we often accuse uh, theists of, quite honestly. Anyway, thanks very much.